If you're finding that your drums are sounding pretty good, but they're just lacking that extra 20 to 25%, this is the episode for you. Today we're gonna to go over parallel compression and parallel saturation, so let's go right into it. So with the kick, I'm gonna make a send, a sound toys decapitator. I guess I'm distorting the kick drum a little bit, but it brings out some of the nuances of the drum. You wanna to listen to it with the drums to see which profile you like. I find E is usually really nice on kick drum. So you might not notice too much of a difference on this, but it's because I have the track at minus 11 dB. So keep in mind that you want to be level matching as much as possible just to make sure that you're actually making a difference to the sound and it's not just volume, because louder will always sound better. So much. Unless it clips. Lately I've really been liking Devil Lock. I know I use these Sound Toys plugins a lot, but I use them because they're friggin' awesome. So with this one, I like to bring more of the bottom snare ring out. Um, I want the close mic to be percussive and nice, and then I want this one to be disgusting. It's cramming it. And then I do the same thing, believe it or not, with the toms. Except with the toms, I don't go crazy, kind of more so looking for the attack. Usually T and N sound really good. This has never happened before, but I actually really like profile A on these toms. I find the other ones are distorting the floor tom a little bit too much. A is bringing the presence and a little bit of the beefiness at the low end without distorting it. See, instantly it just brings those right to the forefront. So I also left a link in the description for you to download the stems so that you can follow along if you'd like. There's the MIDI drums, the raw stems, and then the bass and the guitar. I make another crush track for like the cymbals to sustain. I do add all the drums through, but I level each one separately. Chorus, really like Devil Log on this one. I've tried other plugins and they either mess with the phase a little bit too much and I can't use it, or they just don't do what I'm looking for. I only get a little bit of the shells in this crush track and then I usually push the cymbal tracks the most. And then I'll add a little bit of the room mics in as well. So now that I have a general level of what I want out of this track, I compress it a lot so that the cymbals are sitting. Later on, if there's too many frequencies sitting in like the upper frequencies, then I'll go through and I'll address this and maybe compress it a little bit less or get rid of those frequencies in the overhead mic. That's not the final sound by any means. Once I get everything sounding pretty good, I'll introduce the guitar and the bass. First, I'll introduce the low end and just see how it rubs with the kick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. before we jump into that point, I just want to ask, are you liked and subscribed? Do you like to be liked and subscribed? Do you subscribe to subscribe? Thank you for... <laughs> Sounds pretty good. I don't think I need to address anything probably add a little bit more presence to my snare. I really like this sound toys, it's called PsyQ. You can boost the high end without really getting gross. I'm boosting 9 dB of the high end and it's not by any means harsh. I love this plugin, and sometimes I'll use it on kick if I need a little more click sound to it. Uh, it definitely adds a lot of presence to the kick in a nice way. I've really been liking this Neve 33609. I'll set my sidechain frequency to miss a little bit of the low end. I'm kissing the compressor just a little bit and it's basically just to cut down some of the very hard hits and very lightly limiting it. You can add a snare reverb. I kind of just bring a little bit more of the fatness out. 
I really like this Valhalla plate plugin. It's a bit more low endy. I don't want there to be too much of the high frequencies in this because they'll get in the way of basically everything else. I'll get rid of a lot of this. no vocals on this but once vocals are in the picture you start to really compete with the frequencies i make a lot of choices like with the bass guitar i have a plugin here called track spacer and it's a sidechain plugin i set it so that from 64 hertz and below five percent of the bass volume is dropping and that allows the sub from the kick to poke through without building up on the bass and then i have the same plugin on the guitars every time the snare happens it's cutting between 192 and 1.7 hertz so that's essentially what it's doing so even if you don't have this plugin you can make a multi-band and then you make a frequency here say where the bass would be side chain exterior make my side chain kick drum Every time the kick drum goes off, that frequency is dipping. And since the bass and the kick drum are contributing to this one sound, you want to get that right. So I just want to point out that this is not at all a finished mix. These are just the principles that I use to get my program drums to sound a bit more real and similar techniques that I do with actually track drums. So that's how I go about mixing program drums to make them sound real and to make them sound a little bit more processed. But that's only half the battle. And to get to this step, you're going to want to watch this video to see how I go about programming drums so that they're more realistic. Thanks for watching and tune in next week. See ya.